Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I source cars for people on a professional basis. Although most of the cars I source are between £1,000 and £5,000, very often I've been asked to show something a little bit cheaper on the channel and so I came up with no budget reviews. The series where we look at cars that you can buy in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand pounds and you can enjoy driving. We don't film this in an expensive manner, we don't use separate microphones, we don't use do it head tripods, we don't even use a DSLR but we do have a lot of fun. Sometimes viewers I get the opportunity to kind of revisit some of the great episodes of No Budget Reviews of the past. Not necessarily exactly the same car, but in a similar type of car. And this is one of them. This is a 1999 Peugeot 406 3 litre V6. And it is just exquisite. It's the same colour as the 1998 one that I filmed in 2020. It was owned by a viewer called Gary. Diablo Red, and it's also a manual. The uh, 406 V6 was probably featured in the film uh, Ronin, driven by Robert De Niro in that uh, car chase towards the end of the film, uh, when uh, he was uh, pursued with Jean Renault, um, Jonathan Price, I think it is, and uh, Natasha McAllen in a BMW E34. But that was a V6 manual, so is this. And um, this is a facelift car, it's a very early facelift car. We suspect, because of the Coventry registration on this, that it was originally um, a press or Peugeot fleet car. These were made for a time in Coventry. I can't remember exactly uh, which models were. Um, a lot of them were made in France. Um, but uh, yeah, some of them were, I think, made in Coventry. I got, uh, this one, I'm not sure. So yeah, they had a pretty big presence um, in the Midlands until the 206 went out of production in 2006. But anyway, let's open up the boot. We've got a very big boot in this car. Fortunately, uh, Arthur, who owns this car, and uh, it's been his family for over 20 years, um, hasn't had a chance to clean this one because one of the other cars in his collection I was going to film today has um, malfunctioned. And uh, so that took up his time trying to fix it, so he hasn't had a chance to clean this one. Uh, so he apologises in advance. We have a full-size spare wheel with the jack and the wheel brace, which is fantastic. I think the... Post facelift cars like this one, an early post facelift uh, dated from 99, uh, do look a little bit better. Very important badge viewers, very, very crucial. So you've got your different uh, headlamps in this, different bumpers, different grille. One of the uh, fog lights needs changing, the right hand one's a bit cracked. Um, you can see it's quite a different colour. But other than all, they, they, these cars look, they look great. The design, I think, dated quite quickly when they were new, but now they of a sort of classic design and the four or six coupes that were styled by Pininfarina and I've driven one of those on the channel a chap called Justin I know who lives in the Midlands and has masses of Peugeot 406 V6 uh, coupes um, driven one of his but also Coventry registered also um, a Peugeot UK press or fleet car uh, so I, I do like these very much viewers let's have a look in the back see if we've got some space in here Central locking is not that competitive at the moment, so I'm going to use this door. You can see straight away that we've got this really weird situation where we've got no door warning light on that side, but we've got one on that side. I don't know why that is. Let's move my stuff out of the way. There we go. Okay, so we can uh, get inside. I've adjusted the seat for my driving position. So, yeah, even though it looks initially like it's not, it's going to be a bit tight, you can put your knees just in here, which is fine. I think Mr. Richardson, who also has filmed the other 406 V6 saloon that, uh, that I filmed, um, he's a bit shorter than me, maybe he just drives a bit differently. He didn't seem to have the same sort of issues that I do with a lot of cars, with not having enough space, even though I'm not very tall. 
Um, yeah, my head's right against the ceiling in here, which isn't, isn't so good. But, you know, uh, we've got a black leather interior. The other car had a different coloured interior, of which I'm sort of more fond, but this will do. Lots of people like a bit of black leather. I like the wood views. The wood is very nice, very nice, very executive. But there's a trim level on this as well. Um, so we've got armrests. Oh, it's pretty big in here, actually. Um, and we've got door pockets down there as well, which is nice. We've got an ashtray. Ooh, there we go. And you get these uh, little armrests on the um, the seats for I've seen long motorway journeys and things like that. You could get an automatic 406 V6. This is a manual um, for that full kind of Ronin driving experience. And it, yeah, it's it's good. I, I think maybe I'd, I'd sometime like to try and estate one of these and see if the headroom's any better in the back because it's my head's just brushing with the ceiling. If you're any taller than six foot, you might have a little bit of difficulty in this. But yeah, it's, it's very comfortable. These, these these seats with these pleats in them, <laughs> they're very nice. Right, uh, let's get in the front, shall we? What we to say about this car is it's done over 160,000 miles, and to be honest, it doesn't actually feel it. it. It feels a lot fresher than that. One thing we don't have, in comparison with the earlier cars, is the most annoying keypad immobiliser ever in the history of the world, uh, which would be about there. We don't have that in this car. Let me just uh, pause a second whilst I close the door. Right, so we've got an auto driver's window, which is good. Um, got a uh, stalk here for changing a radio station and that kind of stuff. Also got cruise control, which is good. I prefer parking sets as well, but cruise control is fine. And this is uh, the classic sort of Peugeot stalk that you twist for the lights and then fog lamps on there as well. Uh, wipers are just over there on that side. Um, we've got buttons for the odometer and the buttons for doing plus or minus. I don't want to touch that view in case uh, I adjust something that I shouldn't. Still got a tape deck in here. Um, I don't think we've got a CD changer in here. I think this was the standard Clarion system. You'd probably get a CD changer if you wanted one. Glove box is, um, to be honest, it's quite, it's, it's quite big, but it's not big enough, which is a bit annoying. Never mind, we shall have to just put me secret mission documents in the rather capacious door pockets. Anyway, that's fine. Got a soft touch dash in this actually. You've got revised heater controls um, over the pre facelift cars. Little ashtray down there. Got a uh, cigarette lighter, would be there. Heated seats. That's a button for turning off the um, interior alarm if you have a dog in it or something. And a switch past your airbag. I would have expected there to be like a sort of cover on top of the cup holders, but never mind. It's good to see actually. The car that was originally launched in 1996 actually does have some cup holders in it um, because they are very useful things. Right, let's set the edition on and see if we can have a look at these displays. Well, viewers, I, I, I lied. Um, there is a CD multi changer in here somewhere. It's probably in the boot and I didn't see it, as you can see with this display. So, um, we've only got single zone climate control in here, I think. But it's it's very simple to operate. It, the main issue I have is the button for the fan speed is much smaller than the button for the temperature and adjusting the flow of the air. Um, but that's okay. Ooh, RDS, I remember that. And yeah, it's, it's nice and comfortable. The, the seat is electric as well. And uh, there is the mileage. It's about 163,000 miles. The big stop thing, which I think is to do with uh, the braking system, but because I haven't started the engine. It does sound very nice. Can I start it with my left hand? Let's see if we can. Yes. Let's have a little rev, shall we, viewers? <laughs> Let's go and have a look at uh, what lies beneath, shall we? So, hydraulic struts. Dead fancy for 1999 on a family car like this. So here is the 3 litre V6 engine. I think it's called the ES9 in this car. Very unusual uh, dipstick arrangement, isn't it? That's, that's very strange. Um, but yes, yeah, so the radiator apparently is the only major thing that's failed in this car. It's failed twice. One was uh, in 
within uh, <laughs> 13 months. It's just after the warranty ended, because it was only a year warranty that you got on these cars in 99. Uh, but I've had another one since, but you know, considering this car is 24 years old, it's 163,000 miles, I think we can forgive it really. Quite tightly packed, the uh, engine is also shared with um, other Peugeot and Citroëns and also the Renault Clio V6. There is a cam belt on these engines and I don't think it's a very easy job. It is a bit of a nightmare from what I understand. But if you're going to buy one of these cars, obviously the four-cylinder ones are a bit easy to look after. Um, then, uh, just, um, then just make sure that that's been done. It will save you a lot of um, kind of headaches and things. Right, I think it's time to go out for another little spin here. I think that's, uh, that's what we'll do because it's uh, an enjoyable kind of drive, this one. Right, viewers, let's uh, go out for a little spin, shall we? Which uh, should be fun. So, the basic engine in, in our market, anyway, a lot of other markets receive different engines, but the basic engine for our market was a 1.8 with 112 horsepower initially. When the car was um, facelifted, not necessarily all the engines got upgraded, but most of them did. So, the later ones of these had 118 horsepower then there was the two litre there were three different um, two litre engines um, actually the basic one when the car was launched in 1996 generated um, 135 horsepower that was changed around the time of the facelift as I said there might be some cars for the facelift of the early ones with uh, the older XU engine, but uh, that was changed um, for I think if you've got the EW engine, which generated 138 horsepower. There was also a two-liter turbo um, version, which uh, was had 150 horsepower. Bizarrely, in 2001, they also introduced another two-liter engine. It's called the HPI engine, I believe, 143 horsepower. Um, I think it was a direct injection engine. The two-liter turbo was actually replaced with a 2.2 uh, a naturally aspirated engine in about 2001, from memory, about the same time as the HPI came in. And then we get to the really interesting stuff, uh, the two V6 engines. The first one, which is in this car, generated 194 horsepower, but I think in the year 2000 that was changed for like 210 horsepower unit, which is the same as in the uh, 406 V6 Coupe that I drove in 2021. There are also some diesels available, but as usual, due to controversial government legislation and uh, all kinds of other reasons, uh, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. talk about is the very pleasant way that this car drives. 0 to 60 in this is about 7.9 seconds. Uh, top speed I think it's 140 miles an hour. They're quite fast. Um, gearbox of this manual is, is pretty good actually. It feels more than capable of handling all this power. Although the car's front wheel drive, the chassis is excellent. The ride and handling Traditionally, a, a Peugeot strong point um, is is excellent. Very comfortable seats, um, soaks up a lot of bumps. The steering actually in this car is better than the previous one. The previous one, um, they have variable system to power steering the 406 V6s. And uh, I think this is just working a little bit better. But it did retune the steering for the facelift. And um, although it's light at sort of lower speeds, but there's actually some weight to it um, when you go faster as well. It, it's it's really good. It's very easy to place the car nicely. It's a real shame actually that the car that came after this, the 407, although it tried to incorporate a, a lot more technology and things like that, and you know be a bit bigger and heavier for 
crash regulations and all that sort of stuff. Um, they they aren't nearly as nice, really, in many ways as, uh, as, as these are. And I'm very glad to have uh, had a chance to drive another one. Lloyd Vehicle Consulting stickers, t-shirts and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below. So viewers, let's have a look at some uh, Peugeot 406 trim levels. The base model uh, was the L, and then up to various other times we had the LX, the LS, which is very confusing, the LXS, even more confusing, the GLX, the very nice GTX, the Rapier Special Edition, uh, the S, the SE, the SRI, and uh, the SX. There was also an executive model um, that was kind of most um, common, I believe, of the V6 after the facelift. I think this is just a normal V6 rather than an executive. There was, um, before the facelift, a V6 and a V6 GTX. The GTX, confusingly, actually came with less equipment than the standard um, V6, which is really strange. Other places this car was made, apart from France and... Uh, um, I think it, it, some of them were made in Britain, uh, were Italy for the coupe, Egypt, Nigeria, um, Thailand and uh, Indonesia. So viewers, should you consider a uh, 406 for your hard-earned budget up to uh, £1,000? Well, you can't get a V6 really these days for £1,000. Um, that's um, a bit of a misnomer. I'd say probably... You, nice v6 is going to be between three and four thousand pounds certainly a four-cylinder one that absolutely um these cars do have sort of issues sometimes with electrics um they don't actually have that many problems with rust considering the age of them which is unusual um and um they uh also i think most of have got timing belts in them so that's just something to be aware of but uh yes you know they make a nice little retro modern classic the latest ones of these were sold in this country in 2004 so um they're sort of quite old cars now anyway thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching thank you again to arthur for letting me uh, film his lovely car and uh we shall see you again soon for more inexpensive motoring